All right, with us now, the TV guru himself, CarterMatt.com. Matt Carter, how are you, my friend? I'm doing very, very well, Brandon. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. I tell you, we got to get right to it. A lot of new shows to talk about, a lot of new stuff going on. Let's go ahead and start with yesterday's uh, premiere. I know it doesn't air here in the U.S. for a while. What can you tell us about the new season of Sherlock, that everyone is just on pins and needles on how this is going to go forward? Uh, Let me tell you, I mean, I... I'm a big Sherlock fan the past two years. I mean, two years since their last new episodes on the air. I mean, that's crazy really to think of in itself. But what I can say, first of all, is that it's really going to be worth the wait if you're wondering what happens to Sherlock, how he was able to fake his death at the end of this past season. I mean, there's going to be a lot of great stuff in there where he slowly starts to give some of the information away. I'm not going to say too much more than that, but... If you like the first two seasons, you're really, really going to like this. I think it really lifts up to all the hype. Can you speak to any of the fans that have some, uh, you know, apprehension about adding Mary to the mix? I think this is this is really a sort of thing that happens almost any time there's a new character on any show. I mean, it happened with you know Downton Abbey and Rose is going to be on a lot more this season. It happens with you know Community. He's going through a casting. Just like any time there's a major shift when it comes to how a show is doing something, people worry, they freak out, but I really don't think there's going to be too big of an issue with Mary. I think it's going to work well in the ensemble. I think really at the end of the day, it's a sort of, and Stephen Moffat, the executive producer we trust, he's done such a great job the first two seasons, so why why should anyone start to doubt now that something is going to come in and cause chaos? I think really just take a deep breath, relax, the show is still the same show you love. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I, uh, I, 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 it's probably the show that I'm looking forward to the most, and uh, possibly some of the best television I've ever seen. Um, let me great. shift. It's let really me let, let me shift gears there and go to my wife's favorite. She can't wait for season five of Justified. Uh, I know we're going to have a lot more uh, kind of. Every season seems to start with new chaos and new resolution nearly every cycle. So, what can you uh, give funds a little insight for, and, and how you see this playing out a little bit? Well, I think there's a great reason why I and a lot of other people love Justified. I think the coolest the coolest thing about this show is really some other shows. They kind of take a few episodes to get you into the action to figure out what's going on. Justified, not so much. They're just going to throw you right in at the start of Season 5. You've got some really big new characters. I mean, the, the biggest one is Michael Rappaport. He's playing a guy named Dale Crow Jr., who is the head of this sort of Florida crime gang who Ray Lynn is going to be coming up with a lot this season. And some of the premieres actually shot in Florida, which is a little bit different for the show. And you're going to see some really kind of cool stuff there, seeing Ray Lynn out of his element a little bit. And I think, you know, if you're a big Boy Crowder fan, and I I really love Walton Goggin, he's just a great guy. And that his story is going to be really interesting as well. You're going to see a lot of him and Wynn Duffy and what they're trying to do. Boyd is going to really be intent on trying to figure out how to rescue Ava from her current situation. And, I mean, Goggins already said that you're going to see Boyd do some things that are really surprising. I mean, some of them even surprised him while he was filming the show. So I think this is going to be a really surprising Justified season. And it's a little bit of a, uh, it's a, little bit of a return to form. I mean, last year didn't really have the sort of big, overarching, blah ha, ha sort of big, bad character. And I think they're going a little bit back into that this time. Yeah, I think that the uh, the previews of this really were kind of kept quiet for a while, and now that we're into it, I think we really do like, uh, A, I think the biggest thing is, A, we see Raylan out of his comfort zone, and then, of course, like you say, yeah. something different from Boyd. Let's continue to see Boyd change, because his entire personality and character is just like a pendulum. It's always all over the map, and to see that continue is, is a fantastic uh, storyline, in my opinion. Yeah, Boyd, to me, is probably one of my ten favorite characters on like on any drama show right now, and... Just he just even hearing about what they're going to do for him this year, it's just it's refreshing. They're not just keeping him in the same place. Biggest show on television, no doubt, is the one. I mean, just a massive cult following with The Walking Dead. Uh, what are you hearing, and what do you think about the second half of uh, season four? Oh, The Walking Dead. It con- it continues to be huge. I mean, I admit that. There were times during the first half of this season I was a little worried that certain things were taking a little bit too long and. We didn't see the governor as much as I probably would have liked, but I think going into this next part of the season, we've got this new showrunner running the show now, Scott Gimple, and I think he really kind of had to spend the first half of this trying to 
figure out what he wanted to do when he was in charge of the show. And I think the second half is going to be much more of his vision and much more of him really getting in there and really showing some more character-based stories, showing what happens with the entire group separated. You've got, you know, you've got Carl and Rick doing one thing. You've got Daryl doing one thing. You've got a lot of individual stories. And a couple of questions that are going to be interesting to think about is not just how these people are going to get together, but when they're going to get back together and, if everybody who is out there right now is still going to be out there then. I mean, it's The Walking Dead. There are going to be people who die. That's just the reality of the show. And while there are really, there's a lot of things that are still under wraps, but I think the two biggest things to look out for is you have Michael Cutlitz, who's joining the show as a series regular, and he's playing Abraham. If you've read the comics, you know a lot about Abraham already, but that's, a, that's going to be a really big part of this season and seeing what the show does with that character. And then you also have Carol. Everybody's kind of wondering, you know, where's Carol? What's happening with Carol? She will be back at some point this season, and that is literally all I can say about her. They're being very tight left on Carol. Yeah, and Melissa McBride even sounds like in some of her pressers, I'm not sure she knows kind of how far out Carol's future may be, and uh, she's done a really good job of keeping uh, these secrets under wrap. And uh, Scott Gimple had an interesting angle on this, and I want to get your take on it too, because he said he kind of wanted yeah. to back off the governor a little bit because he was just kind of sick of the governor. Isn't that kind of an interesting yeah. spin on you know the villain role? It's like, listen, I, need, I, I the creator, need a break from the villain. It's an, it's an interesting discussion, and I remember seeing I remember seeing that quote and kind of scratching my head a little bit at it because I think to a certain extent I think you do need a little bit of a break from the governor and you do need to see what some other characters are doing, but it was almost too it was way too lopsided in my just in my personal belief because you were going into maybe like the first four or five episodes of season four and then there's no governor and then you go from no governor to governor all the time for a couple episodes and then you have the big battle in the mid-season finale and it was almost like by the time you put back to the prison after these kind of standalone governor episodes you had to kind of remind yourself in your brain oh oh this was going on at the prison oh daryl's just now finding out about carol and it took it took too much of a mental reminder of everything that was really going on i think Personally, if you have the governor and if you have David Morrissey on your show listed as a regular, I mean, I think you've got to do a little bit more with them. I think that story would have been more interesting if you saw some hints kind of leading up to it a little bit sooner because it was almost like, you know, the governor's here. We're finding out more about him and he's gone and Morrissey's great. And I think, it, I think just my personally, I think Gimple may have been feeling a little bit like he wanted to put his own stamp on the show to a certain extent and figure out what he wanted to do with the characters where you know, the governor and Morrissey, that was really a situation and story that was set up heavily by Glenn Mazzara, the old showrunner. So it may have been a creative thing. It may have been a feeling where he legitimately wanted to see where these characters could go without the governor. But I mean, the ending is still the ending. He's gone. I just, I just wish that it was handled a little bit differently as well. All right.